remain your election command center. And I stay with issues of elections with 32 days ahead of us right now. Coming up next, attempts by the Ghana Freedom Party to replace the deceased flag bearer Ekia Donko has not been without confusion and drama. Earlier today, two letters, and that's coming up next, two letters to the Electoral Commission with different signatories uh, surface communicating different things. While one confirmed replacement of the, the deceased candidate, the other said the party communicated a notice of withdrawal that they are not going to take part in this particular e election. And videos later emerged showing that some members, and that's the video you're seeing on the screen right now. The video you're watching right now captures some members of the party, including Philip Apiakubi, who is well, better known as, uh, or popularly known as Roman Father, who, according to the earlier reports, was confirmed as the running mate to the late Equiadonko, and now the party are taking a decision to have him contest. What you're seeing there is the Electoral Commission's conference room where the IPAC meetings take place and all the other meetings we've been seeing telecast live on television at the Electoral Commission. And you'll see the Ghana Freedom Party, what is supposed to be some officials of the party, filling the form. And then the, these documents were handed over. The person receiving it is none other than Samuel Tete, who's a deputy chairperson of the Electoral Commission in charge of operations. Present as well is Benjamin Banobio, who's the Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission. Now, we've been knocking on the doors of the Electoral Commission to, to give us some information, confirm this to us, as to exactly what, if, as we speak, they have not disputed this video as to whether indeed it did happen or not. But we are seeing the people in the video and, and what is happening there. Files being handed over. The details and the contents of those folders and the papers, that's why we're asking the Electoral Commission. They're yet to come out publicly on this matter. But the man you see in, in dreadlocks is or was the running mate to the late Ekiodonko and now the flag bearer of the Ghana Freedom Party. There's a reason why this is important, right? And we're, we're going to have a few uh, political analysts join us on the telephone and on, on Zoom. And Dennis Barberi Wadam is going to be joining me in a bit. We'll have a conversation on this matter. But the two letters that surfaced saying two different things. We're going to put it on the screen right now um, in a bit. But this is what is said to have happened at the offices of the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission has not officially communicated as yet whether they have received the nomination and the forms of this gentleman you've seen on the, you just saw on the screen as the flag bearer for the Ghana Freedom Party and or it is indeed the case that this was an earlier video that's unrelated to the subject of who replaces Ekia Donko. So, we're waiting for the Electoral Commission's official communication on this matter, but this video, if there's anything to go by, it also gives us an indication of what's been happening. But let me show you these, these letters. Take a look at this. The first letter that came through was notice, for this came earlier in the day, notice of withdrawal from 2024 December polls. The National Executive Committee of Ghana Freedom Party, in consultation with the family of Ekiadonko, the late, has decided to withdraw from the impending December parliamentary and presidential election. That was the communication in this one. This decision, they said, irrespective of how difficult it may be, has been reached to posthumously honor the commitment and sacrifices by our late founder and presidential candidate as the only person to send her candidate to, to, to her grave. Any inconveniences this decision may have caused the commission and its calendar for the December 7 election is this deeply regretted. We, we, we will also be ready to participate in future any future election. But this letter was signed by one Richard Butchery, who was described as a national organizer of the party. There are some phone numbers down there. We've been calling those phone numbers. No, nobody is picking up. At one point, the phone, the numbers went off. Since then, whoever Richard Butchery is has been unreachable. That's the first letter. Let's look at the second one. This was the notice of withdrawal. 
the earlier letter that came before this one also communicated something else. And take note of this. All of this has the Electoral Commission's receipt stamp on it, acknowledging that indeed the Electoral Commission had received all these two. This one says, nomination of new candidate. I bring you greetings from Ghana Freedom Party. I make reference to your letter with reference numbers, goes on and on. I hereby write to inform the commission that the party has duly nominated Philip Apiakubi to replace our late presidential candidate. And his name is hereby submitted to the commission in line with your request in the letter under reference. And this was signed by George Affol, General Secretary of the Ghana Freedom Party, copied to the Deputy Chair in Charge of Operations. And, well, the Deputy Chair in Charge of Operations, Samotete, is the one we showed you in that video, receiving the documents from this gentleman who has been communicated as the flag bearer of the Ghana Freedom Party, replacing Ekia Donko. There are dynamics to this, and why this is really of importance to some have said both the MPP and the NDC. Dennis Poberi, Wadam Esquire is here. What are we seeing? Well, Alfred, you recall last week we were here and uh, we're looking forward to the Electoral Commission um, issuing a statement on the next line of action. Mm. And around this time, the Electoral Commission had issued a statement, mm. and this is just by way of rec recall, where the ele Electoral Commission had acknowledged what had happened. They made reference to the fact that the 1992 Constitution and the Public Elections Regulation, CI 127, um, did not have the processes to follow in the event where a candidate or a presidential candidate passes. Mm. However, they were relying on Article 54 of the 1992 Constitution for their next line of action. It was based on that that they notified the party that they could nominate another candidate within the period of 10 days. Um, from that time to today, that's in the space of seven days, almost reaching the 10 days. Indeed. Now, what we are seeing is, 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 is um, something that needs to be settled once more. And this has to come from the Electoral Commission. Mm. Just so we are clear whether or not what happened today indeed was the filing process and if it was successful, what their next line of action would be. This is important because the Electoral Commission had indicated by their notice on this day, 29th of October, that there were no clear processes as to what to follow. Mm. What it means is that they will then give direction what happens next. Right. However, the dynamics at play, and that largely feeds to the reaction that greeted the letters that were, that were out there. Mm. If you follow the conversation on social media, you would realize that there were some groups who were jubilating over one of the letters, which purportedly was for a withdrawal of the... the, the GFP from, GFP the, from, from the race. What but was going to be the implication of that? Well, so... If that is anything to go by, or if that were the case, what it means is that the number three on the ballot paper is now going to be uh, a vacant space, and the Electoral Commission likely would find a way of filling up that space. And that possibly could be what? And that possibly could mean that what they call the automatic rearrangement. What that means is that all the numbers that come after the three, that means four, five, six, up to 12, would have to go up. I mean, that's, that's an option that the Electoral Commission. And mind you, there are no rules to this too. True. It only means that the Electoral Commission will direct as to how to go about it. Exercise some discretion. Exercise some discretion. But from the conversation we are seeing, it's, it, it seemed to suggest that that would have been a likely thing that the Electoral Commission would do. So, and that's the reason that on the 29th of October, you see a Facebook post by the Director of Elections by the NDC already sounding a caution that if there's going to be anything like an automatic rearrangement, they would not... Which would then would, affect the number eight of Yes, which the means that NDC, NDC, which is now number eight, would go up to... Num I mean, would go up or down? Up, up to, to number seven. seven. But the MPP will not be affected? No, because, because they, number they, one, they number go, two, they will not be affected. I see. And that's why when that letter, like I was saying, the reaction that greeted it, when you look at the kind of people who were sharing the withdrawal letter on the internet space... Indeed. Most of them are aligned to the MPP. And they're already making the analysis that what it invariably means is that the NDC will now be on number seven. And right. that's why it's very important for the Electoral Commission to state categorically what the status of the GFP party is in respect of this matter. They mm -hmm. also need to state the next line of actions True. as to whether, if they are not in, they are going to do that automatic re rearrangement or there's going to be an overall ballot or how mm -hmm. exactly they're going to proceed from this particular point, Alfred. And it's an important derivation that you make there, Dennis, because 
the implications, as you put it out there, clearly <laughs> defines why the two parties, as the MPP and the NDC, have been looking quite closely at what the Ghana Freedom Party was going to do next. Exactly. But if what the videos are, we're saying right now is anything to go by, does it bring finality to this? Well, so if the videos are anything to go by, it brings some sort of finality to it. But then again, it takes us back to the first concern that was raised as to, you know, in this statement, the EC had said, parts in, the, in parts of the statement, that they had suspended the printing of the ballot papers. Yes. What it means is that if this is anything to go by, now they're having to replace this candidate I mean, the number three with a new candidate. That's Invariably, they'll have to do a reprinting of those ballot papers that have already been printed. What you are looking for is just right behind you. Yes, you so the in the meantime, papers. the commission has suspended the print of the presidential ballot papers, which were near completion. What it means is that what we are seeing on the screens by way of some persons at the EC office um, filing some processes, if that indeed is the GFP party and it's gone successfully, then it means all these that have been printed already wastes. We have to print again so that we can have the gentleman's face on the ballot paper. The over nine, almost 19 million, you said? Unfortunately, and over, that's the price we pay for democracy. Printing all over again? Yeah. Wow. Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri is a senior lecturer, political science department, investor of Cape Coast. He's been watching this particular issue play out in a very interesting way. There are two issues we're going to have a conversation with them on. About Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Thank you, and you're welcome, my friend. Based on what Dennis has said, it, it clearly defines the heightened interest that both the MPP and the NDC had about what's, what was going to happen next with the Ghana Freedom Party after the demise of Ekia Donko, and, and because of the impact on, on, the, on, on the ballot paper. Now we are seeing the videos of a gentleman now presenting some documents to the Electoral Commission. The EC remains tight-lipped on this matter. You expect them to speak as soon as possible? Yeah, certainly. Um, they must ensure that, you know, the dust settles, so we continue with the printing of the ballots, especially the presidential one. Um, I believe that there is no need for any kind of confusion. If it is a party, so to speak, then obviously it has its structures. And I believe that the structures do not in any way allow a, a, what's it called, a national organizer to say otherwise that they are contesting or they are not contesting. I think that um the general secretary might have done what is right and that is it they have filed and they are going to contest now the issue then comes with the letter commission what role do they intend to play now if they want to muddy waters and try the the first option that dennis was talking about then they are going to create a lot more confusion and obviously people are going to get angry and they will definitely and the image of the ec will even suffer the more because there is no way the NDC will accept the fact that you are just going to do an automatic adjustment so that if a Kedonko's party is not going to contest, then it means that the four will become three, the, the five will become four, six, five, seven, six, eight. It's not going to happen. What if they, and, 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 and even if you want to do that, it is not backed by law. And certainly that is not going to work. So if it is to the understanding of all and sundry, then it means they're going to do a fresh balloting. And you can imagine the cost implications. So if Madame Okiodonko's party is not going to contest, obviously they can. They can young them off, but they have to remain on the ballot box for peace to prevail. So that if she will still be the number three, if you want to vote for her posthumously, you can go ahead. But those votes will be invalid. And that is the only way I think that the law is going to be applied. Anything outside this, I think that the image of the EC will go into will, will, will suffer, you know, a lot more than how it has suffered. And I don't think that they want to opt for that particular option. And with the, with the videos that we are seeing now, and I mean, you would understand why there's no certainty in the minds of people, even with the video evidence of documents being handed over to EC officials, captured on video, receiving them, because we only knew Ekia Donko as the leader, founder, and, and everything of this Ghana Freedom Party. We didn't even know the general secretary or, mm -hmm. uh, no. you know, we only got to know the running mate at every point during the elections that she partook in. So what uh, is the uh, next, in your view, the, the, the fundamental expectation of the electoral commission in the coming days, especially because the officials are captured in this video that we have? 
they should stick to the law. If they don't want to create any kind of mischief, I think they should stick to the law. And that is the only expectation that will keep their heads above the water. And that in, in itself also go a long way to cement the fact that they are now building a kind of good image in the minds of Ghanaians. Especially, you know, you remember what happened at IPAC when it was telecast live. And so these things have helped the image of the EC for some time now. They wouldn't want to get embroiled in this kind of confusion. They should stick to the law. The notice of poll has already been done. Presidential ballot papers have already been printed. It has just hit a snag because Madame Kedonko unfortunately has passed on. And that is it. If they feel that they've not done border consultation, and I, I believe what you're saying is right, because uh, apart from the MPP, NDC, probably Afrofanto, and even Bediako, we don't even know who Bediako's executives are. You see, it is just a one-man show. And so it, it is quite surprising that somebody would spring up and say that he's a general executive. We don't even know when the elections were done. And that is the more reason why the EC ought to crack their whip. Because we know that some of these smaller or minority parties, so to speak, they have a certain agenda. It is not because they are concerned about they winning the elections when they know very well they're not going to win. It's a matter of, you know, getting opportunity at IPAC and either lobbying one of the two major political parties, so to speak, and then they get some kind of benefit. Because under normal circumstances, no rational human being, knowing very well that you don't even have executives, you don't even have national whatever, and yet you go and file, pay hundred and whatever thousands of CDs to file and become a presidential candidate. What are you hoping to achieve? I mean, wow. in, in all sincerity, why, why do we do this? There must be a certain higher motivation, and that is some kind of benefit you know, you know, on doing one of the two or doing the bidding of one of the two. And that for me, if the ECs over the period, you know, are to crack the whip, things of that nature will not find any space in electoral processes. Okay. Well, and I thank you for your thoughts on this, Martin. But, but stay with me, Dr. Jonathan Asantiochi, because it's another issue of concern as well to our viewers, which I'm going to seek your thoughts briefly on. Coming up next year on Ghana Tonight, Ahead of Parliament recall on Thursday, November 7, Speaker Alban Sumana, Kingsford Bagman, right honorable, will tomorrow address the press on recent developments in the House. And this is coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. We are just getting this information uh, some just a, about an hour ago. So this is a developing story which we're keeping an eye on quite closely, fresh on the plate here. On Ghana tonight, we got a statement from the Speaker's office. We'll put a statement on the screen right now for the benefit of those listening to us on 3FM 92.7. Uh, the letter and then, in fact, the statement from the Speaker's office says for immediate release. Speaker Bagbang to address the media on Wednesday, 6th November 2024. That's tomorrow. It says in straight and short, the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament, Right Honorable Alban Sumana, Kingsford Bagbang will address the media on recent developments within parliament and broader issues concerning democratic development in Ghana. This engagement aims to provide an opportunity for the media to discuss critical issues affecting Ghana's parliamentary democracy, including recent events that have led to significant political developments. The address will take place tomorrow, Wednesday, November 6th, 2024 at 2 p.m., at the Justice D.F. Annan Auditorium, Job 600 Parliament House. So that's the information coming through right now. And this is a statement signed by the, issued by the Public Affairs Subdivision of Parliament. So that's the information right now. Dr. Jonathan Asantiochi, the, the, the fundamental question, even though Parliament is going to be recalled or has been recalled on November, to sit on November 7. That question of who is majority still remains unanswered. And do you, do you posit that this is going to cause a problem on Thursday? Well, certainly. I think probably that's the more reason why the, the right honorable speaker, in his own infinitesimal wisdom, will want to address probably an issue such as this. Because, believe you me, the NDC haven't done some background questioning and interviews. I believe that 
you are not ready to budge because they've already sent a message, especially to the Supreme Court and to their colleagues in Parliament. That message has, you know, has been widely, you know, circulated, and that is they are not ready to budge. I felt that, you know, they could have you know, um, mounted a high moral high ground and say that, well, having listened to the ruling of the Supreme Court with respect to the, the fall with that state of execution, they believe that they can foresee what is likely to happen. So they don't need it. Uh, whether it is majority or minority, they are going to keep to the status quo and remain as they will want to. But Ghanaians by 7th of December, they will decide who should become, you know, the, the proper majority. I felt they were going to go on that tangent. But it appears that, you know, the optics are not good. And there is there is more to it than what meets the eye. And it's not everything that can be put, you know, in the media space. I think that when the, the letter says that democratic development in Ghana, that in itself is a mixture of issues. And I think that the speaker will want to speak, you know, over these particular issues and probably leave that to the consciences of all. I don't see what he will want to do, but he's someone that, you know, trust me, he can easily swerve both sides. And that is what I predicted on Class FM, and that's exactly what he did. But with respect to what is likely to transpire tomorrow, maybe he can decide to settle the issue, you know, you know, and take it off okay. the storm in the way of the, the what's it called, the, the judiciary. Probably he may say that, and I think that the NDC caucus is ready to listen to him more than anybody else. If well, he says that that state of execution that has been thrown away, thrown out because the Supreme Court says it lacks merit, he can decide to say, well, let us go by what the Supreme Court says. But great. I think that a man could easily swerve everybody once again. Well, thank and you. that could also hit a stalemate. I appreciate your thoughts on this matter. We'll monitor how things play out tomorrow. And that's going to be live on TV3 and on 3FM 92.7 as well. So make a date, 2 p.m. tomorrow. And Dr. Jonathan Asanchotri, Senior Lecturer at the University of Cape Coast Political Science Department, thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight.